Hey everybody, welcome back to the Twilight Zone. This is the third last episode of the 80s Twilight Zone. It's called Crazy as a Soup Sandwich, Whatever That Means. Last time we had Love is Blind, about a man who uh, was blind to his hip hypocrisy and uh, ended up getting a glimpse of what his life could be if he was making certain decisions, and a blind man helped him along the way. And it felt like we were spinning off into a, another show, in a way. Anyway, I'm looking forward to this Crazy as a Soup Sandwich episode, because it sounds goofy as all heck. Well, we're in... Oh, shit. An alley. As certain as death and taxes, we are told the meek will definitely inherit the earth. Perhaps, but not always. Consider, if you will, Mr. Arky Lochner. This guy? A well-known petty crook, sidebar six for fiver Shylock, an owner of a yellow streak so vivid it could be slathered on a hot dog. Mr. Lochner okay. was written out of the will when the meek were guaranteed their inheritance. And just now, he's trying to avoid another kind of payoff. A soulful payoff in that off-track bedding parlor we call the Twilight Zone. A monster is chasing him. What the hell is this? Seize your flight, you four-flushing What? This is the second most ill-advised action you have ever taken, Arky Lochner. The first was trying to make a bargain that would outwit me. I'm 32,000 years old. You this guy sounds like a um, one of the... He sounds like a Cookie Monster. He sounds like Cookie Monster, this guy. I was like, who is this? He wants this voice reminding me of. It sounds like Cookie Monster. <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy as a soup sandwich. <laughs> what is happening? What is this? Is this some sort of dream? There's a cloud talking to him. Even among my peers in the fourth canonic order of demons, I'm considered a truly ghastly dinner companion. Um, nom, nom, Did nom, I nom. mention I enjoy sucking the marrow from the living bones of idiots like you? I still got two days! The contract ended up for two days! Two days! Why is it you're tormenting me? Because I'm a demon, you imbecile. I don't send singing telegrams, I torment! That's why I'm called a demon instead of the Easter Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bug me for two days! Bug you? <laughs> two days from now I'll remember you mentioned bugs. Perhaps I'll turn you into oh, one. Oh no! A small, black, crawling bug. <laughs> well... Something, something's happening. <laughs> Why are you running? Why are you running? The cloud went away. Head, Mr. Lancaster, sir. No, no, I perceive that you must be seriously deranged to burst in here unannounced, Arky, with half my boys looking for you. That is, unless you have secreted somewhere on your scrofulous body the one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars, including today's interest at seven hundred and fifty percent. That's a lot. You gotta protect me, Mr. Lancaster. I can do that, sir. I can twist off his head for you. Mr. He Lancaster. loves twisting heads. <laughs> Before we have Gus and Bork reduce him to his component parts, would you be interested in hearing his tale of woe? Calmly now, Arky. Calmly? what seems to have unhinged you. He doesn't do calm. Ha, ha. The 165 G's I got loaned from you, ha, you know? That's a lot of uh, G's. Uh, I needed it because I, uh, I had to make this kind of deal with this, uh... Entity. demon. He calls himself Volker. It's a cloud. <laughs> That guy's got a teddy bear. A supernatural being. Yeah, 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 you got it. A creature of Stygian darkness. It's a monster from some nameless plane of witchcraft and horror. Yeah, you got it. Bork. Twist his head off. Look, look, I, I, I ain't making it up, Mr. Lancaster. Honest, I ain't making this up. That thing's after me. He's right up there in the alley. 
Well, we made this kind of deal. See, he gives me all the winners at Pimlico, Aqueduct, uh, Liberty Bell, and Maywood. All in the same day. Okay. In exchange for? Uh, first refusal option on 51% of my immortal soul. Then you'd be able to pay me back in full, including the crippling interest rate. He gave me all the winners, all right. 20, 30, 42 of them. And I bet them all, and 40. they won. Each and every one of them. <laughs> well, what happened? Why didn't you... Have... <laughs> A few of them had strokes, and they died as they crossed the finish line. And a bunch of them got disqualified because it was full of dough. Disqualified. And 11 of them got scratched for bumping in the stretch. Oh, sure. They all came in first, all right. And I lost every cent I got for you, Mr. Lang. They didn't pay out. And that's why I've been ducking your collectors. Yeah. Like an evil monkey's ball. Why should I bother? Well, $165,000 plus the interest for four months, including next week. Hmm. Miss Thorne is my accountant, Archie. She makes a strong case for your continued huh? existence. And you believe me? I believe that I believe you believe it. Uh, yeah. As the most powerful underworld figure in this great metropolis, I have managed to make cohesive sense of the rackets. Can you make a sense of this episode? Ennui fills my days and nights. No oh, ennui, eh? I get that. I have that sometimes. <laughs> You bought yourself a momentary reprieve through dint of sheer imagination, Arky. Tell me, how did you even go about locating a demon in these conservative climes? Just look up. A woman I heard about uh, supposed to have a strong in with the netherworld. Uh, I visited a couple of times. I suggest we pay her a visit. Gus, the car off you, please. We're going to see a woman. Beauty shop. This one? You are the impressive Cassandra Fishbein, trafficker in the black arts. I'm a beautician. I'm a business associate of Mr. Lochner here. He advises me you served as a go-between, amicus curiae, for him oh. and a um, oh. yeah. personage named Valkerps. I'm calling a cop. Probably not. Very likely in my employ in any case. Or perhaps I could ask my employee, Mr. Chaucer, to persuade you. He likes twisting heads off. Oh, you do it that way? I'm just a poor businesswoman trying to make an honest buck in a world of kids hot for purple hair and shaved heads. Have you ever considered the range of unexpected tragedies that could befall an unwary coiffuse? Uh, His insurance premiums, no matter how exorbitant, would not cover the mysterious mixing of DDT with her shampoos, or the constituted authorities suddenly get it into their heads to toss the businesswoman's apartment for illegal and noxious substances. Pardon my complex syntax. But I imagine you get my drift. It is complex. Well, yeah, I set it up for this guy, but I'm just sort of a clearinghouse for a select few demons and soul traders of a very high quality. There's this quota of souls they have to make each year, and I'm sort of a canvasser, a okay. scout, okay. to steer likely prospects. Like this guy. Excellent. Here, you will set up a meeting with Mr. Volkerbs for us. Oh, I, would, I, I wouldn't. You, you... Now, you're out of your mind. This Volkerps has a very ugly personality. He think I'd turn him. Are you trying to get me snuffed? Have you ever considered how cold and uncomfortable it is being hung upside down on a meat hook in a freezer? That doesn't sound great. No, she's going too. By all the marges of Solomon's court, I call thee Volkerps to come forth. Cassandra, I smell betrayal. <laughs> Honestly, they made me call you. Get him! Waste him! First things first, Cassandra. <laughs> the little rat human. He has two days. Yeah, this guy. But you... He, he's after! She's dead! <laughs> you, you wanna make a deal with the cloud? Have you ever seen anything quite like this? <laughs> Is this real? Am I awake? Do the standard pile! Pile! We need to pile! What happened? Where's Nino? I don't know. He's dead. He's gotta be dead. He's talking to the demon. Oh, he, came. he came straight from hell. He still sunk a rotten egg. You left him? Yeah. You ran? Yeah. He ran like hell. Oh my god, Nino! Help us stack, lady. That means we have to consolidate our interests. 
begin amortizing the rolling stock and, and make sure that we got amortized no boys try to take over the territory that thing's gonna fry us and eat us it's coming oh is it knocking clouds don't knock who's there Nino, open up is there anything in these boxes <laughs> He's just, just fine. It's going to be a little more difficult than I thought. If you can't take him, what chance have I got? I didn't say it was impossible. I said it was going to be a little more difficult than at first I thought. But how'd she get away? I dazzled her with fancy footwork. You ran? Okay. You danced Let's for get him? to it. Gus, Bark, go see Nuncio at the docks. Get me a hundred gallons of lead paint. Okay. What color, boss? Doesn't matter. Well, it comes in battleship gray, you know, oh. which is like your standard color. Yeah, get that. Maybe we can get him to mix up a special batch and some get that nice one. pastel. Quiet! Get gray, get anything, but get me a hundred gallons with the highest lead content they can find. Battleship gray. Then spray the inside of this office. Ceiling, floor, walls, windows. Every inch of it. Every corner. While they're getting the paint, you keep an eye on Arky. I've got a long trip ahead of me. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where's he going? Where's he going? Some things you don't want to know. We can hear where he's going. What's in the box? This is gonna save me? I am not at the pinnacle of my profession for nothing, Arky. We have to wait till midnight. Okay. He'll come at midnight. Anybody who wants to go, do it now. Not you, Arky. <laughs> you gotta stay here, Arky. It's all about you. Here's looking at you, kid. No, oh, time is going real fast. What's in this box? Are we gonna trap it inside this box? You again? <laughs> I thought you'd had enough. Yeah. I'll give you one chance. Cancel the contract with Harky. Give him about a million dollars to make up for what he lost at the track, and I won't kick the crap out of you. <laughs> you can't escape. It's lead lined. You can't. He got him. I'm bleeding. He got you. Oh, you lousy twerp. Enough is enough. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I order you by the power of Asmodeus and the toad of death to suppress thyself. Yeah. Submit, suppress. Get your miserable, ugly backside into the box, you twerp. Get into the box. You lousy punk. No, cool orb. Um, 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 He saved you, dude. I've had some uh, small experience in these matters. I'll get you. I'll rend you. I'll savage you. I'll shred you. You think you're the first slug from hell, all puffed up with hot air, who ever tried to muscle in on my operation? You're small potatoes. Yeah, small potatoes. Papa? Papa, what are you doing in here? No. Like son. Yeah. You saved me. Taylor's all this time. You saved me. I saved you. Now all you gotta do is make a deal with me. No. Uh -oh. oh, he's a demon now too. I remember he already wa always was. Oh, Arky, Arky. No, Arky. Poor Mr. Lochner. There's an old, old, very old saying. Making a deal with a demon is seriously crazy. It is. But making a deal with the master of demons, 
well. Crazy is a soup sandwich. It's crazy is a soup sandwich. You know what the craziest part of this episode is? The craziest part of this episode is that it's written by Harlan Ellison, i.e. the person who wrote City on the Edge of Forever. Now, if you were to compare this episode of The Twilight Zone to the Star Trek episode City on the Edge of Forever, well, it, it's got a romance. They both have romances of a type, you know? And... They both have voices coming from things that aren't necessarily uh, totally human, you know? Because we had the Guardian of Forever in City on the Edge of Forever, and we have a cloud demon in this one. I don't know how to talk about this episode. I just don't know how to talk about it. It's an, on an entirely different plane. I guess that makes it fit the Twilight Zone, but it's definitely it's definitely different to anything we've ever seen. I think it's vaguely incoherent. I think it's badly scored. I think the acting is overly hammy. And I know I think that's what they're going for. It's loud. I talked to you before about how I don't like the loud episodes of the 80s Twilight Zone. This is super loud and manic, and it's full of energy, but it's it's what it's missing is substance. You know? This weaselly little guy goes to a mob boss to help him with his demon problem. The boss then outsmarts the demon and puts him in a box is the story it just I don't know it just doesn't work for me if for me it doesn't work it might work in some other medium or in some other show uh, but I just some of it was funny it was very offbeat it had offbeat humor to it like the guy who was twist like the twist heads off and also, the two guys playing with teddy bears, and the guy twisting the mannequin's head off, and the... They, you know, the funniest part was the guy lifting the customer out of the the beauty parlor. You, you know, that was the funny part. It was just so offbeat and strange to see. I was laughing. Like, genuinely. I, I, I don't mean that sarcastically. But then there's, oh, there's the manic running away, and stacking boxes and accountant lady and it's just a lot of a lot of stuff happening it's fascinating to it's fascinating to watch but um that's it that's it it's a lot of color and sound but what does it all amount to in the end you know so my official review of this is that it's it's a bad episode I admire it trying something different. Some of it was funny. And maybe it does have a place in the Twilight Zone because that is the place for odd things. But it's too oddball, goofball, crazy to to want me to ever rewatch it or or anything like that. I guess if it's your type of humor, you you might love it. It might be something that people love. But for me, I'm just like what the hell? <laughs> what did I just watch? You know? I'm not normally like that. Usually I love goofing about and playing along. But this this went too far over the line. I got my lines, you see? And if people go over them... It had the Cookie Monster. Apparently that guy's a Canadian wrestler. He sounded like the Cookie Monster to me. So I always laughed. Every time I heard his voice, I was just giggling. <laughs> that was the other funny part of the episode. 
Right. And the writing. The writing was too much. It was too overly verbose, and you didn't know what they were saying half the time. I think that, that made it worse. You know? But, uh, hey, it could be an acquired taste. Maybe if I watch it again, I'll watch it again in editing. Maybe I'll be like, you know what, this isn't this isn't half bad. That's happened a couple of times before. I've been like, wow, it's too hard in this episode. It was actually okay. This one, I don't know. Crazy as a Soup Sandwich is a good title for it. Right. Get out of here. Second last episode of the Twilight Zone 80s style is Special Service. And I will see you back here for that next week. Thanks for watching.